going here so we can make sure we have enough time for questions and all that good stuff towards the end. Wilson, thank you very much. I appreciate you guys and gals joining me here on a Monday, a rainy Monday here in Michigan. Uh, I guess it's that time of year, I guess. It's uh, it's going to be snowing here pretty soon. Don't like to say that, but it's going to happen. But um, thanks for coming. Uh, in this presentation here, I'm just going to go over some uh, multifamily investing information. Um, uh, just kind of, you know, Tell, show you what's going on and kind of give you an idea of what the next steps will be from from this presentation going forward. Um, let me make sure I can I can click through here. Here's kind of our agenda here: uh, who we are, who I am, what we do, um, and I got to still make sure that I have somebody embedding people there. Alrighty, so this is our agenda and how how uh, the third bullet point there is how apartments investing compares to single family investing, um, why investing in apartment buildings works, what are emerging markets and we'll, we'll kind of go over that. Next steps, and then obviously uh, the questions and answers. We're going to leave a lot of time uh, in there for for that because I want to be able to answer all your questions. Uh, who are we, or who am I? Uh, we're an investment and management company that acquires and manages multifamily properties. Um, in emerging markets, and that's kind of the key there. Uh, we use a lot of demographics to uh, target cities and states that are emerging, meaning, that, and I'll explain that a little bit further here in the in the presentation, uh, that are that are up and coming, that have job growth, uh, that have some signs of let's say life, unlike let's say a Flint, Michigan, where you know it's it's pretty much dead. No offense to people who are in Flint, um, but obviously we improve the cash flow and and move on from there and, and, and turn around and sell. And typically we've been doing uh, five years. Now we're looking at six to seven year holds because of the, the COVID effect. And we also offer opportunities uh, of other top syndicators, and I'm not a top syndicator, but uh, to our group as well. And that's one we do have uh, one we're looking at right now that I'm raising money for from another syndicator in, in another state, um, which I'll kind of go over a little bit towards the end here. Um, so we also offer that. So I'm kind of networking and in tune to a lot of different things in the real estate realm and networking with a lot of different people out there, a lot of different opportunities opportunities that may be beyond the borders here of Michigan. That's where I, where I am based. Um, and a lot of different states are, are doing better or doing worse than Michigan. Uh, so what do we do? So we have five main functions, right? We locate the emerging markets in the U.S., but again, by performing market research, we look at job growth reports, population growth, path of progress reports, and local economic reports. Uh, I go down right to the neighborhoods uh, so I can I can see block by block and a, a census block um, uh, what what is a good area. The reason I do this type of information and do this type of due diligence is when we're buying a property, we want to make sure that that we can execute our business plan, right? We can raise the rents or well, if you know, 85% of the population is is below the poverty level, you're probably gonna have a hard time moving the rents up, you're probably gonna have to move the rents down. And with investor money, uh, with people such as you, uh, that's not a good thing, right? You need to invest in something that's going to be going up uh, and, and we can make money at it and refinance it and get money back. And or when we sell, there's also profit in there as well. We locate value add multifamily. Obviously, that's a kind of a catch word, and I'll explain what value add is. Uh, the emerging markets, uh, we deal with brokers, we deal with uh, uh, pocket listings, or let's say, uh, you know, off market deals. We also do direct to seller mails. We also have called, we've also texted, did a lot of different direct marketing to sellers as well as using the broker community who really are the gatekeepers of this business um, and a couple different uh, areas. Uh, uh, services that we get for closures and short sales. Not too many in the in the uh, short sales in, in the uh, multifamily for closures. And we're not seeing a, a whole lot of those uh, yet. And I don't know if there will be because of the fact that the, the, the banks have been a, a, a doing the forbearances uh, and are very aggressive compared to 2008 as far as helping out the landlords. And there's a lot of state and federal money for that as well. 
We do the property inspections. So basically we're full service. So if, when, when you invest with us or with on a property with us, there's nothing for you to do other than just look at your statements, attend the webinars, uh, you know, open up the emails we send you, stuff like that. So we, we're not expecting you to invest money and then, hey, by the way, get on a plane and go and inspect uh, the property if it is out of Michigan or even, you know, drive to it. You can drive to it. That's no problem. But we're not expecting anything from you as the investor. Okay, we also negotiate contracts and place on financing on the property. Uh, we take care of all that. You're not involved in that. Um, we, we know what the financing is going to be on the property typically before we put a, pro, a PSA or a purchase agreement on it. So that affects our returns. Um, and, you know, you know, sometimes that, that at the last minute could change. But, you know, in today's market, it's, you know, we, we have enough, you know, leeway in there to do that. So, again, we don't look for you as the investors or investing in this. And this is, and if you don't want to invest in with us, although other, other syndicators as well, you know, ask them questions like, oh, you know, are you expecting, you know, us to do anything? Uh, they shouldn't. Okay. And then we also do the asset management part of it. And that's the biggest part uh, that we feel. And that's where we uh, execute on our business plan. That's where we get in there and, and, and raise the rents and do the, you know, manage, manage the manager. Uh, we, we use third party property managers that we vetted uh, and meet our criteria. So we go in there and review their reports and then those reports are combined and, and compiled and then given and shown to you during our monthly meetings as well. So um, that's the biggest part of this job is being a, you know, uh, let's say investor relations or, uh, you know, uh, investor in, uh, in property management or in, in multifamily is the asset management part of it. You know, the buying it and the due diligence, that's, you know, that's, that, that is, you know, challenging at times and stuff, but really where the money is made is in the asset management, management side of it. You know, are, are they executing on the business plan? You know, and if we didn't, why, you know, what are the, what are the steps that we're going to take to meet the goals? if we didn't achieve them this month to next month, stuff like that. Uh, and again, we do visit the properties uh, on a, a pr pretty frequent basis um, for that. So that's, that's, but we do all that. That's that, that, that is not anything for you to do. Now, obviously you can visit the properties that you invest in. Fantastic. You can do that. Um, you know, we encourage it, uh, but we don't require it. And then five, you know, when we get down to rolling up the business plan and executing the business plan, the liquidation of the property, that's usually the last phase. Um, and then we take care of all that. We, we engage a broker uh, and we get it under contract for sale for a strike price that we already know. Uh, typically the strike prices we know uh, usually right around the date of purchase of where we want to hit it for because that does again affects all of our returns uh you know going back you know so if we 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 say we want to sell for x and at this cap rate and that's what we project and do all our projections on uh and the projections that we give you and the opportunity uh, packages and stuff that you'll be receiving with that so that's typically that's that's usually a pretty good you know, five-step process uh, that we follow to do that. Obviously, I'm doing a high-level overview here. Uh, there is more detail that we're gonna we can go into, and then that's that's the next step or next phase in this. Uh, this call tonight is just kind of getting you familiar with it, getting familiar with me again. And I've seen some of you on the call that I've already talked with and stuff like that. But again, with the with the SEC rules, I've kind of got to do it in a one and two and three-step process here. So that's why we're doing this tonight. Um, let's compare single family homes versus apartments, right? You got uh, on the left-hand side, your left, uh, you got a whole bunch of homes all over the city, uh, which I can totally relate to, you know, versus one building, you know, one one block of the neighborhood, you go to one place, right? Um, obviously, there's there's a lot bigger differences in that, and I'll get to those in a few seconds here. But uh, you know, in the first swipe, that's typically the thing. You got three different roofs. You have one roof, right? So it kind of it it makes it out. Many many of us have single family homes, which I I have come from too as well. You know, tenants, toilets, and trash, right? You got burnt land, landlord burnout. You got headaches, low cash flow. 
uh, single family, you know, depending if you're a section eight or if you're doing regular leases, uh, you know, expensive management fees, because again, you can't really scale with, you know, 10, 15, 20, or even 50, uh, because they're all over, unless you own the whole block, the property management are, are gonna have to be driving. And that's, that's where the expense comes in. And obviously vacancy loss, you know, you lose one on a single family home, uh, it's 100% vacant. You lose one on a 10 or 12 or 20 or 100 unit property, it's, you know, 2%, 1%, you're still making money on other ones. And again, nothing new here, uh, but just kind of giving you an idea of the difference, you know, in, in the real reality of it. You know, you get chasing the tenants to collect the rents, uh, managing yourself challenges. That's one another thing that I uh, really kind of don't miss when I was doing my single family uh, is chasing the people, you know, to for the money. You know, where it, when you invest in multifamily and the commercial side of the business, you, you have a property manager to do that. And they usually engage a, uh, you know, attorney and it's, it's more of a business than it is, uh, you know, uh, you know, you're renting to your friends or whatever. Vacancy losses actually, like two houses vacant out of six or is 33% vacancy. 33% vacancy in multifamily is huge depending on the number of, of uh, uh, vacancies and that, and that costs you a lot of money. Uh, in the downturn, uh, obviously single family homes drop dramatically. Uh, dramatically. Uh, what we've seen and from here in Michigan, let's say, uh, is that the, 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 the occupancy is, is hasn't really been affected by COVID. Uh, they're, they're the, in fact, the, the number of people who are not paying uh, really hasn't moved the needle much. The next, I guess, um, uh, to this point, the next uh, mile marker, we want to call it a milestone, is uh, next month's rent and see because some of the uh, stimulus package is worn off. Uh, but the people that I'm talking with and owners that have properties uh, that I've been uh, speaking with really haven't had a problem with that uh, because there's some federal and state and local uh, uh, assistance out there for renters that are already ahead of that. They're already, again, they're already uh, in there, which is good, right? And, you know, requires more time and money uh, to um, get you in there. Let me see here. Apologize. There it is. My mouse was not working for a minute there. Uh, requires more time, right? Uh, and we all know this, and this is this is probably not new. Uh, you know, vacancies are a huge impact in attaining the cash flow. Um, you know, trying to get people because again, if you're doing single family rentals, uh, typically I was doing leased options or leased to own, so I was working with those people to get their credit up so they could buy the house from me, right? So I could so I could move on to the next step. Where in a multifamily, uh, you're just you're just basically you know, renting for as long as they want to stay there, you know? Uh, and again, a lot of different things uh, hit there. A lot of people uh, during this time now uh, are having to do that. Hello, somebody there? Okay, all right. So why apartments, right? Why invest in apartments? But first we got to talk about what is an emerging market, right? What is an emerging market? Why do we look for those? Um, now I didn't do this in the single family uh, part of the business. Uh, one, cause I didn't know about it. And two, uh, I really didn't know about it. So I educated myself. Uh, so a real estate market is a potential to grow and appreciate within five to seven years of holding real estate. And that's the key in the multifamily is that appreciation or forced appreciation, meaning if you can do things to the asset uh, and the management of it, the running of it and the, the actual asset itself to increase the value. Uh, another huge difference, which, we, which I didn't have on these slides is that single family home um, value or appreciation is based on your next door neighbor or the guy across the street or two doors down that has the same type of house as you. Now in the multifamily and commercial end of the business, we can have two apartment buildings uh, right across the street from each other and they can be valued and, and very, very different in price, maybe hundreds or thousands of dollars or maybe even a million dollars difference based on the operating income of that property. And that's the big, huge difference is that the 
income of a commercial property dictates and the expenses dictates the value of the property. Right. So emerging markets we look for has job growth, has new companies coming in, people migrating, people population growth. Um, now, uh, I kid and say, oh, Michigan, this, but there are cities in Michigan that is that, that is actually happening in here. Uh, you know, there, there is areas of, of, the, of Michigan that are growing uh, the west side of the state, you know, Kalamazoo and Grand Rapids area. There's a couple cities over in that end of the uh, uh, spectrum that are that, that do have these so those are areas we target so even though overall the state may be losing population right there's other pockets that you have to look in that that is going there now having new companies coming in people moving into the area you know uh, having uh, you know uh, low construction rates and and people just more general people coming in there helps w for what reason what reason is to bring new people into your new apartment building that you just bought so then you can have them rent from you if everybody's leaving the city nobody's going to stop to rent an, uh, and sign a year lease uh for your apartment building while they're you know checking out running down to florida right so emerging markets is 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 uh, very important i can remember dave lindahl back 15 years ago uh he actually wrote a book on emerging markets and and it's very powerful when you start following those trends and you start following that kind of stuff even in 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 a state that may not be growing you know that uh, pun for michigan there is pockets in michigan that are growing and then you have to know that and that's where we invest in all right so what is the ideal market for an ideal investment right you know stable industries right large businesses service businesses a mixture of different things i can remember you know five ten years ago that all that michigan was known for is manufacturing Right. I mean, that was that was it. Right. It was autos, autos, autos. Now that's kind of turning. Right. That's kind of turning. Yes. Autos are in and that type of business and vendors are still big. But now it's it's a little bit more of tech and a little bit more service. That's what you need. So that's and, and a good case in point is here. The city like of, of Orlando, uh, you know, yes, it's a hot spot. But with this COVID and COVID um, and everything hitting, it got hit. It get crushed. Why? Because 90% of its population is in the service injury. Well, Orlando shuts down and hotels shut down and Disney shuts down. Guess what? You know, not that means, you know, you got to take a look at that and see there's more of a diverse economy, you know, new jobs coming in, high potential for renters versus homeowners. I also look at the uh, cost of a new home and there's got to be barriers to entry, right? There's got to be a barrier to entry. If I'm a, a renter and I can't afford the, the single family home at, let's say, two, three hundred, four hundred thousand dollars $400,000, it's just cheaper for me to rent. And that's what you look for as well, right? I also look for state capitals, universities. That's big in a downturn is the universities. So we look at all that. Uh, and, and we look at all those different points to see if this city or this state or this county is somewhere that we want to invest in. Right. So what is the value add? What, what do we what do we mean in a value add? Now, value add is obviously, you know, the properties run down, you know, deferred maintenance. You know, uh, there's 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 few and far between of those uh, sometimes. Uh, but a lot of times you can find value add in other different things like the, the residential utility uh, billbacks, the rub system. It's amazing how many uh, things one of the properties we have under contract right now the, the landlord still pays the water. And it's just, that just amazes to me because I just, I've owned, I've owned single family homes. I own my own home. And I'm like, why would somebody else pay my water? And it's just, but it's, again, it's just those things you can look at and that can, you know, you can improve on that. And that's a value add, right? Can you, can you go in and add playgrounds? Can you add a dog park? Can you add in, you know, uh, something with the Wi-Fi? So there's a lot of different things than just the actual property is run down. Obviously, those are great. 
but there's also what else can you add to the property you know parks dog parks you know uh fitness centers are big now uh you know renting out renting out your um, your leasing center for parties those are all different value adds that you can take a look at when you're watching and again i'm not expecting you as an investor to do that that's what we look for when we we look at these opportunities and we put that all into our analysis to find out what is the business plan what is what is the the, the best way to uh, hit the the numbers we're looking for on this property we also look in two different areas of apartments now here here on the screen here is is all the different different classes of, of properties and the two in red are ones we don't look at now class a is luxury apartments with modern amenities good location you know less than 10 years old or the shiny pennies right typically when people buy those they just buy them for for a place to park their money the, the, the yield is very little because uh, it hasn't hasn't been long right the, the property is built at the top of the market uh and there's just no return it's basically really you know, uh, it's, it's, just, it's just a place to park money. Number B over here are class B and also class C is the two areas that we look for uh, our apartments in. Okay, the tenant mix of white and blue collar workers. It's an okay location. The building's typically, you know, less than 20 years old, sometimes 30, depending on the, the area. And then there's where you can add in the value if, if it's got, you know, uh, let's say, you know, galvanized piping or if it doesn't have have, you know, it's got a flat roof, stuff like this. You can look at C tenant as well. Same thing there. These are what they call workforce housing project, or, you know, uh, kind of complexes. And this is what really kind of drives the economy. So that's the two areas we look in or class wise and neighborhoods and typically what we look for and again state by state it's different uh you know we look for annual income in the household uh, for a c level would probably in michigan here it's uh, around thirty five thousand and uh, and up uh now in georgia it may be lower, maybe 25,000, but again, cost of living, the same thing. Uh, you know, you got to take it step by step, but we look at that depending on where the investment is at. And obviously D here on the far right is your war zones, right? Th those are places that you, you know, you know AK-47 to go in and collect rent. Not banging anybody that does that. I'm sure a lot of people make a lot of good money in that, but uh, that's just not our, that's just not our philosophy. So our, our philosophy is in the B and C type of area uh, where we can get Get good returns and a stable workforce. Okay, so again, why apartments again? Historically stable over the past four decades, multifamily has uh, return uh, returns exceeded. I'm sure you've heard in the news that apartments are doing great. Yes, they are. They're doing very well, uh, and they do well in a downturn as well, uh, because again. It's not, somebody, the, here's the biggest thing uh, that I heard somebody say the other day is, you know what, I'm gonna invest my money instead of putting it in a bank and making 0.01%, I'm gonna put it into housing, right? Everybody's gotta live somewhere, especially now that's most, more so more important because now guess what? Everybody's working from home, right? They got to have that place to live. So they're going to pay the money. They may upgrade a little bit in apartments because now, you know, dad's got an office or mom's got an office upstairs where before they didn't have that because work from home may be here for another six, seven, 10 months. Don't know, right? So it's even more, you know, stable now. And again, housing is always a good thing is they're always going to pay money to be in a house, right? Or some type of housing, right? increasing demand like we talked about here again you know 60 over 60 million uh in the next uh, 25 years and, and i'll show you in a couple slides here of, of why that demand is going to still keep going because of what's going on currently and what has happened in the past as well and here it is right here because of new construction right new construction has been down for the last i'd say 10 to 15 years right 2008 new multifamily dropped 15 percent now the demand or i should say the new construction is still there but the demand is still there correct so now we have 15 percent now in 09 we it plunged again right from the, the 208 bubble 
and then 210, 2010, it dropped another 30%. So, you know, if you take a look at that, you're down 60%. Well, we can't backfill fast enough. And then now recently in the last, you know, four or five months, everything stopped with the, the COVID coming in. And again, that put a strain on the already strained system of new construction, not only with the financing part of it, but the construction of it. Right, you know, you, you may may have been able to get financing, but that was pretty much stopped. But now all of a sudden, you know, you can't get crews on your site because guess what, you're locked out, right? So you can see there's a pent up demand going forward, going all the way back to 2008, uh, and I don't have exact numbers, and I and, and, and I will try to do that for the next presentation. But you can just see the pent up demand of why apartments are so so in demand because there's not enough in areas there's just there there's so much under where it needs to be and that's why the prices have been drive, driven up right that's why your rents are going you know for a, a 1200 or 11 or 800 square foot uh, apartment you know they're 1200 1300 dollars a month You're just, i mean it's just insane but that's what's causing it right and also last thing i'd like to talk about is the tax advantage with apartments right the real the real advantage uh, that the small investor can take advantage of uh, e IEU, where if you invest in uh, the properties that the syndicators like myself have uh, is the real tax advantage. You get to write off depreciation, allow annual depreciation to be written off as an expense item resulting in an additional tax shelter. You know, we're all talking about, and next time, you know, they talk about Trump's tax documents and all that kind of stuff. Um, and I've, I've told probably a couple of people here on this call that, you know, the average person, including me, probably wouldn't even understand his tax returns because he's got so much carry forward depreciation and loss and this that they would they wouldn't they would it would just convolute them and your head would explode right but that's why he uses depreciation he uses all those commercial and tax things that you can to you know push off paying taxes right there's no capital gains tax your taxes can be deferred for life if you roll over your capital gains to a like kind or in a 1031 exchange right that's huge that's huge you sell a billing and you get a tax taxable gain of two million dollars and you know that you can roll that over and defer 40 percent taxes until the next time you you know don't want to do it or just keep doing it until your heirs take it over, that's huge, right? Another one is the 15% tax liability on the cash flow of the tax, the ta cash flow you'll be receiving from an investment, right? It's at 15% instead of the you know capital gains tax rate, right? Your spendable cash flow is adjusted to 15% tax liability. Now what I'm doing here is I'm not an accountant, I'm not a broker, I'm not a lawyer. I'm using generic <laughs> figures, so don't don't quote me and say, oh, come on, I make 15%. But again, these are in the tax code and getting a competent tax accountant uh, when you invest with somebody uh, with like us, you know, get with somebody and figure out your situation and how it applies to you. You may not want to do this or you may want to do this plus something else. So I'm just saying in general, these are the benefits that can and the advantages of investing in commercial or real estate. You know, depreciation is a non-cash deduction. It reduces your taxable income from the investment property. In contract, you're obviously in contrast, your property taxes on your single family, your mortgage interest and utilities, insurance repairs doesn't require any cash outlay, right? Or it does, right? But depreciation expense can result in a positive cash flow property becoming a lost maker for tax purposes, right? So this is this this screen here, and again, I'm not an expert on this. I'm not a tax accounting person. This is where carried forward depreciation can be offset against your income, where then you can carry it forward. You have you have losses for many many years, and that's how people get wealthy beyond imagination. But this is just one of the caveats. And again, please consult your 
tax attorney, your accountant people uh, for we're doing this and we would supply all this needed information to them when you invest with us. So don't think that we're just going to tell you about it and then let you go. So we, we at least would inform, you know, you about doing that, but I'm just giving you the high level uh, overviews here. Most investors probably go up in value each year and on paper, their value is going down due to depreciation. Okay. And that's an accounting trick. I shouldn't say a trick, but that's an, that's an accounting rule. Uh, you know, they, they go up, but the depreciation eats away at the value of the property. But again, it's kind of a phantom uh, thing. And again, I don't want to get into an accounting lesson right here on the phone, but it's a good thing to have. Uh, and also Marcus Milchap, uh, they remain bullish on the U.S. apartment market. And Marcus Milchap is one of the national, you know, largest uh, firms that sells and brokers apartment complexes, uh, high levels of future demand, like we talked about uh, earlier as well. Uh, supply more difficult and expensive to deliver. As we've seen just in the last five or six months, you know, we had a great booming economy, you know, uh, before the, the pandemic, we had building supplies, those were getting so expensive. And it was, you know, people were depending on were they going to build or just, you know, take over existing. And now that when the pandemic hits, boom, you got something where now you got to really think about, you know, how are you going to do this? Uh, current rents in most markets do not justify development um, and significant future pressure on rents. Uh, as again, that's just, just Marcus and Milchap uh, letting us know what's going on. Traditional investment options. Now you have other options, right? I'm not saying commercial real estate and multifamily in particular is the best thing out there, but you also got to look at what you're doing right now, right? We got the banks, right? We got savings. In fact, I opened up a, a savings account for my son a couple of weeks ago and she told me what the amount of savings that they give the percentage was 0.012%. And I, I almost fell out of my chair laughing so hard that <laughs> I couldn't believe it. And then the, also the CDs, the CDs is paying something, I think it was 0.12%. And I was, it, was, it was just crazy. But again, that's what's available currently. That's why I'm sharing this information with you because there is another alternative, okay? Investing in commercial real estate. You can also do the stock market. You can also do mutual funds, you know, potential higher, you know, rate, but more risk, right? Uh, you know, all the different things you can do, you know, you do this. So bottom line, your investments dollars are not in your control with these options, right? Uh, with real estate, you invest in it. If, if you need your money out, we replace your, per, your, your investment with another individual. Or when we, t when we refinance liquidate, we get your money back, right? When you go into buy, stocks and bonds and CDs, there's typically you have to leave it in for, you know, five months or 10 months or a year or two years to get any kind of returns, right? But, but you already know that, right? So I'm just kind of letting you know there's different options for this, uh, for your money. We also look at also doing self-directed IRAs. You can use your, your current IRA and turn that over to a self-directed. And again, I don't want to get too in the weeds in this call, but that's just one option for people that have a W-2 job you can use and transfer that over. And we would help you do that. There's a couple firms we use uh, to have that happen. And it's a seamless to you uh, that you can invest in real estate. Uh, in, in, in ours or other people's as well. So, so right now we have currently, and all I can really say right now is uh, we have currently two opportunities. Uh, and the reason for this, uh, this Zoom call is one to uh, introduce again, me to you and us to you and, and kind of give you an idea of what's going on and the different reasons of, um, of um, multifamily. Uh, but SEC rules restrict me from talking any more than I'm doing right here on the screen here. We do have two opportunities. One is 167 unit in Georgia, and one is a 71 unit in uh, Missouri that we are, are raising money for. Um, all I can say at this point here is the next steps would be is if this is of interest to you, and I know I went pretty fast, but I do want to have some time for questions uh, and answers, is if anybody is interested in investing in one of these or further or ones coming up, 
please set up and give me a jingle, give me a call. Here's my information right here. That's my cell phone number, my website, uh, my email address. Uh, and I know some of you have already reached out to me and we'll have to get together. Uh, because of the new SCC rules, there's I've, we've got to have a substantial relationships, a subsidence relationship. Uh, I can't get into details in great detail here, but in our one-on-one -on -one call, we would we would walk you through the different steps we have to take. To again, just just like when you're trying to, let's say, when you did your financial planner, right? They didn't, you know, see you the first day and say, "Okay, great, give me your money, let's go," right? You you got to get a comfortable us, and maybe this is not an investment for you. Maybe you have questions that you know you want to ask that you know before you give us your money. Obviously, we want all the questions answered right? Before you invest, we want you to feel comfortable. And for some people we've talked to, it, it, it hasn't been for them. Now I can tell you right now is if, if you are needing this money to live on, or if you're needing this money back in the next year and a half, please don't give the money to myself or anybody else because you're not going to get it back at that point. <laughs> okay. Uh, it, it's, it's just, you're not going to get the returns you need. You're not, you're, it's just going to be a lot more work for you to do that. So this is, this is, this is like your retirement funds. This is like your, your 401k, different, different stuff that you, you do in the stock market, different things like that. That's what this money is for. And again, I can go in more depth. Please reach out to me. Please contact me. We'll set up a Zoom call and we'll go into more detail and I'll go over to more information as far as the couple of different opportunities we have now and, and the other ones that we're looking at as well. Um, uh, so to just get our process so you understand. And if not, if, you know, if you don't want to invest in us, uh, that's, that's great. At least if I gave you a little bit of education, a little bit of knowledge that you can, you know, do it in a couple of years from now. Great. Fantastic. So, but anyway, that's all I had. I'm going to open up the floor to questions. If anybody has any questions, any comments, I will do that right now. Let's see here. Let me stop sharing here. All right. Does anybody have any any questions? Anything I said to spark a question? Uh, yes, Pat. This is Darmendra. Hey, how you doing, sir? Uh, good. How are you? Good. So I did um, put in my question in the chat window, but I'm going to just say it here. So okay. just like everything, you know, not every dice um, falls right and gives you the six every time, right? You got it. So, so sometimes, you know, more often we succeed and that's why there's a reason to stay in the business and maybe sometimes we don't. So for you, let's say you're investing in 30 properties like this. So if Two are not giving you appreciation and the cash flow the way you expect, that's okay. But for a person like me, this is my one and only one investment that I'm looking at for the properties like this. I would like to know um, what are the chances of our success here. And I understand you said the, um, the earlier, the appreciation and everything you talked about, but just a little more information. So your question, let me make sure I understand your question is, is you're thinking this is your, your, let's say your last hurrah, and that if this money, let's say X amount of money is given in an investment such as this, you want to know what's the chances of success. Correct. Okay. I can tell you this, that they're greater than giving your money to some financial advisor or putting in the stock market. I can tell you that. Um, and we follow a process that's been the process probably for the last 20 or 30 years uh, of doing uh, what this is called private money or private lending. Uh, that's basically what this is. Um, so, but that's a great question. But what I would do is in our one-on-ones or if you, you're going to talk to uh, somebody else, have them go over what the returns are, how they come up with those returns. What is their business plan to get those returns? right? And ask questions about those. Uh, here's a case in point is, okay, hey, we're all, all we're going to do is raise rents by 150 bucks. Okay, great. That, that, that sounds good. And that's a good boost to the income, right? But what if that doesn't work, right? What if the rents are at market, like uh, what we're finding out in one of our properties here? Um, the, 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 there's not that, that huge bump, right? So now we're looking for different 
value add or the business plan is shifting. So I would ask somebody there is, okay, what is the business plan to increase the value of this property, right? If it's just raise rents and that's it, okay, well, that may not be the investment that you wanna do. Now, with that being said, you can ask all those questions and talk to the sponsor and stuff like that. And it, it, it still could not come in where you want it to. Uh, I, I, have, I, have, I haven't heard of anyone that I, my knowledge of uh, failing completely because even, because here's, here's another thing that I'll share with you is in the commercial realm, it's more of a team than it is single family. Let me, let me back up and explain that. Single family is you buy a rental home and you go to a mortgage broker, you get it flag star and you get your bank and boom, there you go. And then all of a sudden you, you get in trouble, right? You stop paying. And what does the bank do? They start sending you and they start calling you. Hey, this is, we, 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 oh my God, what are you doing? We want our money. We want our money. Whatever. Now on the commercial side, it's a lot different. Okay. Uh, first of all, the bank is still going to contact you, but the bank knows that's an asset that is performing however way below what it's supposed to be or not. They will put in their own property manager, okay, and they'll put in their own property management and take control of that property and move that to a disposition compared to just letting it, you know, letting it go into foreclosure. Uh, the reason I know this is because several years ago, I was working with Flagstar Bank on purchasing a couple properties doing just that, where they have, they instill a property manager that the, that the bank picks. The property manager's job is to raise and you know, maintain that asset or raise it up for the bank while they're working with the borrower. So that's probably the biggest difference compared to single family homes. Why is that? Because if they put a big for sale sign on an apartment complex, your people who can buy those is, is a lot smaller than your single family home, you know, in your neighborhood, right? So there's just, it's, it's a different mindset uh, in the commercial realm. Okay. So that's the thing, but obviously, you can still lose money. Don't don't let me don't let me go wrong. You can still lose money, but the chances of that are happening with a team. Meaning, I'm talking your bankers. I'm talking your your um, your accountants, your 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 CPA stuff like that. Your lawyers that are involved in these type of deals. The chances are 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 less than they would be a sing with a single family. But that's a great question. And again, I would ask and see, okay, what are you, what's your business plan? What are you, what are you promising me, right? What's the pro forma? That pro forma is a projection that we're projecting 8% cash, uh, cash on cash return. Or we're doing a, you know, IRR 12% and that's IRR over the whole life of the project. And then each time we get together, we would go over those numbers plus or minus and find out why there are. So, and then that, that's a great question. Did that answer your question? I didn't mean Thank to you. go on. Yeah. So, okay. Um, and that, that, that is, you should be asking that. You should be asking another question you should be asking uh, for everybody is, you know, how, what kind of communication am I going to get from uh, the, the person I'm giving the money from, right? The company, uh, you, you know, we do monthly depending on the, the type of value add, how heavy a lift it is. It could be bi-weekly. It could be weekly. Um, because again, we want to make sure that you are, feel comfortable with what we're doing, the business plan and stuff like that. So, but ask those kind of questions because those are, those are great questions. Anybody else? Yeah, Pat, Dan here. Hey, Dan. Hey, as far as the, any kind of distributions, are those going to be, is your typical format that it's a straight percentage cash on cash return or uh, depending on the property, is it, can it possibly be a, um, a limited partnership? partnership? Um, okay. Let me make sure I understand your question. There's, there's two different, uh, okay. There's two different things, two questions in one. One, uh, when you, let's say that Everybody on this phone wants to invest in one of the properties that we have available here. You would go in as a limited partner. 
uh, in, in a typical commercial is a general partner, which is the managers of the, 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 the thing that we've, we've signed on the loan, we've put the deal together and there's a limited partners, which are basically the investors. Uh, and that would be people such as yourself. Now, you can get yourself on the GP side by raising money and that's, that's a whole nother different ballpark to get on the GP. But so typically, Dan, the answer your question is distributions uh, are uh, typically done on a quarterly basis, depending on the, pro the property. Now, over the last few months, uh, a lot of syndicators have, have uh, kind of delayed that because they wanted to use that as a cash reserve. But typically, it's, it's done on a quarterly basis. Uh, and two, you would be on the LP side or the limited partner side uh, of the of the investment. Did that answer your question? Yeah. Or could it be done where an investor says, you know what, I, I really don't want to be named as a limited partner. I don't want to be involved in that. I just want to be a private investor. This is the rate of return you're offering. I'm good with it. Um, it's just private money loan. Is that part of the, the overall model you're using or no? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, on the limited partnership or anything, when you're investing money in this, on the limited partner side, you, you're not doing anything other than collecting a check. So you're, you're not, and I, and I apologize, maybe I didn't explain it right. All, all, all you're doing is jumping in our calls, uh, uh, listening, you know, opening up your mail, getting or uh, mail, I'm, I'm dating myself. <laughs> You're going online and checking your account for the direct deposit of your, of your, uh, of your, your funds. That's it. You're not expected or required to do anything. Okay. Because that is all on the GP side. We take care of talking to the, the property manager. We talk, we take care of executing on the business plan. So from on your side, you would have no involvement, right? So let's, let, let, let me take an example. Let's say that, uh, that we go back to, let's say the, the, the 71 unit, uh, in Missouri and you say, okay, I want, I want to invest money. And let's say you want to invest, you know, $10,000 just to make it simple, right? That's it right? We're not expecting you to fly out there and go do, you know, negotiate the contracts with the, the, the snow guys. We take care of all that. You're just a money person or a private money investor in that apartment building. That's it. So to answer your question, you, 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 yes, you are just a private money investor. And also being on the limited partner side of the transaction, it limits your exposure if there is any type of lawsuit that would come from, let's say, a trip and fall, stuff like that. You're removed there again. So it is a very, very passive investment, um, probably just like your stocks and bonds, but your stock guy is probably not going to get on the phone with you every month and go over the property and how's it going this net because you know they just don't do that that answer your question yep and you picked up on my second half of it before i asked it was the liability and how the limited partnership yeah exposes you there and, and so forth so yeah mm -hmm. yeah and, and that, that's 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 typically what a limited partner means is is obviously you're you're limited in your you know your exposure to everything uh, and also you're limited as far as what you're doing. You're not flying out like I would be flying out of the properties either here in Michigan or driving, you know, to go do that kind of nothing like that. You're, you're very limited. You're just a private money investor. You would just be looking for those deposits in your bank uh, account. And obviously we, we would encourage people to, Hey, if they want to learn more, Hey, come on along. We'll, we'll, we have no problem with that. We have no problem with, Hey, you were going to the property this month or whatever, you know, join us. I mean, I mean, that, that's the beauty of this business is you can, we can share stuff, you know, and if you have questions, Hey, what about this? What about that? We can always jump on a zoom call or a phone call. So that's a good question. Anybody else got any other questions? I'm sorry. It went so quickly here. Goodness. Dad, I do have a question. Sure. Um, you did mention, I uh, probably went through a little quick for me to grasp uh, something about, you know, if I'm a W2 person and this is my investment now, 
you will help us with some sort of uh, CPA consulting or somebody's to optimize our, my tax bracket. Is that what you said? Yes. What we can do is we can point you in uh, the direction of accountants that we know of and CPAs that we know of the deal in real estate related matters, because you're not going to be able to go to H&R Block and sit down and say, hey, take care of this, because it is a little sophisticated in that but yes we will point you in the direction of people that have that do that uh that will optimize and look at your whole thing and say okay you're investing in this real estate here you make action or w2 what's the best use of this depreciation what's the depreciation schedule and, and that's that's kind of the the technical side of it but yes we would we would help you that because again it's not our benefit to do that because the more i can get you let's say back or, you know, help you as much, guess what? You're going to say, wait a minute, I'm going to tell a friend or, you know what, maybe I'll, maybe I'll do a couple more hundred, a couple thousand dollars more, anything to do to help you with that, because there is such a breadth of stuff we can do. It, it benefits both parties, but yes, we would, we would put you in t contact with people to do that. We don't do that ourselves. So I hope I made that clear. I, I rely on a team, a whole bunch of people to do this stuff that are skilled in doing this and, and doing the, you know, uh, all the depreciation schedules and uh, cost segregation. If we're, when we do those, we, we hire people who do, that's all they do. And then that, that, okay, how does it affect our limited partners? Okay, here it is. Bing, 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 like that. That's a great question. And I've put back on the screen my contact information here. Uh, we're coming up on the top of the hour to make sure you guys and gals had that. Please do take advantage of that. Let me know. And I know, uh, Dara, we, we've, we've got a contact here. But I wanted to kind of just at least get everybody, uh, you know, on, on my network and list here because I am seeing some deals coming up. So I am looking for some funds. Obviously, I can't do too much in the SEC realm here. But... We're starting the conversation, right? Uh, I want to make sure, but uh, but that's my contact information. We'll set up a call. And we're kind of I'll explain in more detail, you know, the process and then the, the different documents and stuff like that that you're going to be seeing when you invest. Um, you know, all the you know the PPM, which is the private placement memorandum, which is explains everything uh, it explains all the risk as well that anything can happen you're gonna lose everything and and two times this and that but we have to do all that stuff right that's just all legal stuff that we have to do to make sure that you understand that this this is this is you know this is risky too but I, I look at this as less riskier than giving my money to a stockbroker or a you know, I used to work at Ford many years ago to a, a guy at um, Merrill Lynch and I don't see him. I don't, I don't see him again, you know, and all of a sudden, but they get their fees every month. And, and as my account was going down or up, but, uh, but, uh, but, but please take advantage of it. And again, if you guys have any questions, I put my information in the chat as well. Email me with any questions, concerns. Um, but yeah, definitely, if you guys are interested, uh, please let me set up something and we'll, we'll go to the next step, which would be getting more in depth as far as, uh, you know, what your goals are and what, what you're looking at doing. And, and another thing is too, uh, Dharma, is that you may want to say, you know what, you may you know, say, okay, I'm going to do X, not X plus Y, right? You may just say, I'm going to test out this much, right? And, and see if it works to quell your, quell your uh, questions, right? So you, that's, that's a strategy you could try as well. Or you could do something like a self-directed IRA where you, you, again, you don't have to invest the whole retirement. You can do just the minimum. Typically minimums are like 50,000, um, uh, in most investments. Now, what I'm trying to do here is do a fund, which means gathering people such as yourself, everybody on the on the call here that gets different amounts, uh, probably like 20 to 25 minimum, and then invest that into a, a, a bigger syndication, right? So we, we, we hit the minimum, but everybody's doing a lot more in that. That's that's a strategy that, uh, that, that a lot of people are employing. I'm gonna I'm gonna look at doing that because like that 167 unit that's in Georgia, um, 
that that's that's another syndicator that I know. So that's what I'm doing is is raising money for that in a group. So the minimums would be less, but so we'd put it in an LLC here and then invest into that that group. Same things apply. And I didn't mean to get too technical, but that's what we're doing. So anybody else got any more questions before we 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 let you go here? And I do thank you very much for everybody that uh, uh, that stopped by. And I hope that I was able to answer your questions. Any other last minute questions? Um, just in the realm of the recapture on the, the depreciation on the limited partner side, is there a, a recapture if the asset is liquidated or sold off? Um, that would be depending on how fast we accelerated and when it was sold in that acceleration. Okay. It's kind of a technical question. I, uh, so meaning that let's say that we did a depreciation and we said we're going to depreciate it or do a cost seg or whatever we want to do. And we're going to do it in three years and we get an offer, you know, in two and a half years, we would have to take a look at that. Typically the, the people that do those depreciation, those cost segs run different scenarios for us. And then we would present that to the group and show that, okay, if this is what happening, there may be a, a potential for recapture of 5%, 10%, stuff like that. But that's a great question. And that's, and that's property by property because sometimes people don't accelerate depreciation. Some people just do, and it, it just depends. But that's a great question. Okay, thank you. No problem. Thank you. Thank you guys for, for calling or calling in and joining me tonight. Uh, I'll let you go here a minute early, but thank you very much for joining me. Look for additional communications. I'm going to uh, do some more different things here and uh, let's see if we can get some investors to rock and roll here. All righty. Well, listen, thank you very much for joining me and you guys and gals have a great night. Okay. You too.